You're listening to MLVC, the Madonna podcast, your place for all things Madonna Louise, Veronica Ciccone. Hey, everybody, it's Stefan. Hey, guys, it's Tony, and Madonna fans do it better. Yes, indeed (laughs) they do. Uh, We are so happy to be welcoming these two wonderful individuals as guests on the show today. They recently published Madonna Fans Do It Better, a fanthology about the queen of pop, which is now available on Amazon and Kindle. Welcome Heather Terman and Leanne Tucker to the show. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having us. Hey guys, we're so happy to have you. The book is great. We've both read it. I actually bought my copy on Amazon and it's somewhere flying over Mexico, hopefully one of these days it'll <laughs> it'll drop in my house. But I did get to read um, I did get to read it, and we're just so happy to have you guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and thanks for for supporting the book and and for giving it a read. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's a must read for every Madonna fan, uh, <laughs> and and we will definitely definitely get into the book and uh, the stories that are in the book in a little bit. Tony, do you want to? kick off a bio? Sure, I got two of them, so I'm going to hit you with the first one. Heather Terman is a comedian, writer, and filmmaker in Los Angeles, and she's performed in over 20 U.S. states and 75 different cities. She's appeared on the Fox series Laughs and in The Seed and Spark original Everything is Fine stand-up comedy special. She sold her first feature screenplay, The Catch, to Principal Entertainment, and then wrote and produced a feature film, Stuck, starring Joel McHale, Heather Matarazzo, uh, Paul Shear and SNL's Chris Redd, and her latest screenplay, Snapped, was a top five finalist of the 2020 Portland Comedy Film Festival and an official selection at 2020 Script Summit. Nice. And our second guest, Leanne Tucker, is an L.A.-based comedian, actor, and burgeoning writer whose comedy has been described as grounded, honest, and laugh-out-loud funny. She performed in the largest touring stand-up comedy festival, the renowned Seattle International Comedy Competition, and has worked as audience warm-up for Adam Carolla's The Car Show. Leanne has had numerous comedic roles and wrote and performed sketch comedy as a member of the sketch group Basic Genius. She was also both host and creator of Leanne Tucker Is Not Crazy, a 50-episode podcast with comedian interviews. Her comedy album In the Room is available on iTunes, Amazon, and most major platforms. And of course, both Heather and Leanne have wrote a book about Madonna, which is why we have invited them on the show today. So... Uh, so you you are both basically comedy queens. That's that's <laughs> that, that's what we can gather from all this. Yeah, we're both we're both comics. We met uh, as comedians. So yeah. Sorry, I was going to say comedians don't think too highly of themselves. So to hear comedy and queen together feels a little uncomfortable, <laughs> <laughs> but I will definitely take it. <laughs> yeah, eventually you're going to have to get used to that. So yeah, comedy queen. You've been monitoring. Take it, own it, yeah. <laughs> okay. But, uh, once again, thanks both of you for writing and publishing this book about Madonna fandom in 2022, proving Madonna never goes out of style. And, you know, also proving that there's always going to be something to talk about. Um, I, yeah, just last, yeah, in January, my good friend from Toronto and also a listener of the show, he texted me and he's like, do you know about this? And I ordered it immediately and I, called Steph and I was like, hey, let's uh, see if we can get them on the show. This looks really interesting, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad somebody brought it to your attention. An international listener. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how you guys came together and how, more importantly, did you discover that both of you were big Madonna fans? At, like, and, and then how did you push this project into fruition? Well, um, do you want me to start, Leanne? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, so, well, Leanne and I, I, I first of all, I feel like on some level... Madonna fans attract Madonna fans, right? Um, Because Leanne and I had become friends, uh, you know, through doing stand-up on the Los Angeles comedy circuit. And I was at her home doing an episode of her podcast. Leanne took her is not crazy. (laughs) And I noticed (laughs) that she had a, she had a biography on her shelf, a a Madonna biography. And I don't remember, was it the, um, 
I think it might have been the J. Randy Tabarelli one or I'm I'm you know me, I'm terrible with who did what, but it's the little thin one, white, and the cover <laughs> photo is when she's in that gold body hugging kind of flames. Of oh, yeah, yeah. I have that same one, but yeah, yeah. I have it um, I thicker. Yeah. One. Heather was like, you know, oh, like, you know, I'm like, I don't remember your wording, but I'm going to paraphrase here. Like it was something like, I'm the biggest Madonna fan or something. And I <laughs> felt this rage come over me and I was like, no, you aren't. <laughs> you know, I was like, absolutely not. Uh, we got to talk about this. <laughs> But then, like, through our friendship, I think she saw that I was a real fan. I wasn't, you know. Truly committed. Yeah, (laughs) truly committed. (laughs) Um, You know, and through our, and during the the lockdown portion of the pandemic, Leanne and I were, you know, you were one of the only individuals who I saw out in the world during it. Um, And I was found I needed that by the way, <laughs> for my mental. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and you had, um, she had found uh, her old journals where she'd written about Madonna. And so she shared it with me and was like, oh my gosh, isn't this so funny? And I was like, you, I was like, we should make a fanthology book. Like we should genuinely, you know, we were under the influence or, you know, maybe I should say I was under the influence of a little Mara Joanna and was like, we should do this. Yeah, man. Yeah. We, we, really, we really got something here. This is going to be so awesome. I mean, it is. Yeah, I'm, I know that in, in 1992 when I was writing that journal entry, I uh, had no clue that I would be putting it in a book later. <laughs> to share with the world. I thought it was my private diary thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> and to, full disclosure, there were some other journal entries too, but the context, it, it didn't, you know, we couldn't find a way to, to fit it all in the book, but um, really funny stuff where Leanne, you'd heard rumors about the sex book and she was really like torn being like, if this is true. <laughs> You've lost a fan. <laughs> I was so young that I really thought like, if I heard something, it was probably true. You know what I mean? So I was like, mm-hmm. if she's really having sex with her sister, this might be where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so actually, we'll tell our so our listeners if you've not read the book. So the book is a collection of stories from various Madonna fans and artwork. Yeah, exactly. So there's some tweets and there's some beautiful photo, uh, some beautiful artwork, paintings, drawings, illustrations of Madonna. But the bulk of the book is little essays written by people, fans of sort of how they found Madonna, what their Madonna journey is. Here on the podcast, we always do. You know, we ask guests, "What's your Madonna journey? How did how did Madonna come to you? How did you find?" Um, I think in your essays, you both you both sort of allude to that and how that happened, and that's sort of what happens in the book as well. You're sort of hearing everyone's. This is when they discovered Madonna, and this is the impact that Madonna had on them. So, how did each of you first discover Madonna? What was your Madonna journey and how did she become part of your consciousness, queer and otherwise? Uh, I'll go. Um, when Because we have different, uh, you know, I'm just a, a smidgen older than Heather. So we came into Madonna at different time periods. Um, <laughs> and the first time that I heard Madonna, I was actually, it's so crazy that I tend to have a visual memory when something important happens. I'll like remember the intersection I was at when you said such and such. And so I was literally sitting in the floorboard of the back seat of my mom's car. Not sure why I was on the floorboard, but um, <laughs> oh goodness, I, I just blanked on on the song. Holiday came on, and I thought it was like the coolest song. And my mom didn't listen to cool music, and I was really kind of confused, and I was intrigued. And then I'm not sure. When I saw Madonna, but I remember there being like an aha moment, like, oh, this is the lady that I heard when I was in the backseat of the car. Oh, my God. You know, and then it just took off from there. And um, Mm -hmm. I was love at first sight. I was dressing like her. You know, I wanted to be a dancer. So that was like my first sort of kinship with Madonna was like. Here was, here was somebody who was a dancer, which obviously is, you know, a big deal to me. And that's what I was striving for at the time. So it was really important. Um, she's a dancer, but also like, she didn't seem like, uh, I mean, I'm not sure when I became aware of her story, but she didn't seem like things had come totally easy to her. 
And I didn't maybe have, I had sort of a challenging childhood. So I felt sort of in that, like I drew strength from her in a way in that, in addition to copying every dance movement and, you know, analyzing, you know, all of that kind of thing. Um, she kind of gave me, she kind of made it like, okay, to be different, you know, mm -hmm. to stand out and it, to a point where like I started embracing it. I mean, there was like a whole goth phase in high school and yeah. uh, goth <laughs> Donna goth Donna is one of the, she is a favorite here on the podcast, yeah. that jet black hair with the smoky eye. We love a goth Donna. <laughs> so that's how it started for me. That's a little, a little bit before Heather. <laughs> yeah. For me, um, you know, I don't remember because I, Madonna was already Madonna when I was born. So I don't remember, which I always think of, you know, like on one hand, like I remember when Britney Spears burst onto the scene and I remember what that was like. And I always, you know, sort of wish I had been there for the moment Madonna burst on the scene. But I also at the same time, you know, feel really grateful that I discovered her when I did mm -hmm. because... Um, you know, I, I needed her at that time. I think that for me, I was always sort of aware of her. I'm from Michigan. Um, I was actually born in Pontiac, you know, where she had started dancing. So I, on some level, I felt like a, she was always like a really, you know, sort of scandalous figure, like people who liked Madonna, you know, it was like basically admitting that you were a sexual being, right. or, you know, and, <laughs> and um, so as a, as a small child, I knew that it was like taboo to like talk about Madonna or like, I just knew that she had these people afraid, I guess. I don't know. Um, and she really stood out to me in that way. And I remember, um, in particular, I mean, I loved, like, I remember, like, the secret music video, like, the early 90s music videos. I remember seeing them and just being like, she seems cool, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and A League of Their Own, I remember I always, we rented when I was little with my dad all the time. And just even as all the way May, you know, once again, Madonna was delighting in a scandal. And I just loved that about her. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so I... Uh, I was really just drawn to her then. And I think being from the area that I was from, it was sort of just common. People would throw it out all the time. Whenever Madonna came up, they'd be like, she grew up around here, you know, she's from here, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and you were like, I, yes, I knew, I knew, I know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I just, and so I took note of that and then, um, and it became, she was like a beacon of light immediately because it was like, Oh my God, someone got out of here. And <laughs> <laughs> and look what she did when she left. So that's, that's what it was for me. I want to also, I just want to say that that made me think of something when Heather said um, that we're, you know, a sexual being just prior to uh, discovering Madonna, I was going to a Baptist church private school uh, in Houston. So super conservative. And I love to dance. And when you love, when you're a dancer, you're, in touch with your body and you move it in ways that people who don't dance might describe as sexual, even though maybe sure. I was unaware of what any of that even meant, you know? So there was a lot of like sort of, she's a slut type of things going on at my, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. elementary. So that was also another thing I think with the dance, it was like, it's okay to be this, like they're the ones that are crazy me and Madonna are the ones that are cool, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and Leanne, like you, you're mentioning Houston. Um, I also grew up in Houston in the Madonna 80s era, which, yeah, yeah so it was very split down the middle where, you know, um, the, the very religious people would say like, oh, she's, you know, she's no good. And, you know, they would kind of, you know, point at her and, you know, I remember like hearing about her in church, which is weird. You know, it's like, why are they not talking about Van Halen in church? You know, but, <laughs> but at the same time, it was also really exciting because um, all the pop radio stations played her. All, all, you know, the roller rink I went to every weekend was always had her on constant rotation. And all the tours came, you know, Virgin Tour at the Coliseum, Who's That Girl at Astrodome, Blonde Ambition to the Summit. And it was like the first show in the U.S., which is weird. Um weird and great. So what were some specific memories that you didn't really uh, touch on in the book from that time that you can remember, you know, about just, you know, Madonna in Houston? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I strongly remember um, 
sort of like the scuttlebutt. I couldn't say if it was from the news or the, you know, mm-hmm. but sort of the vibe that I heard around was very, you know, anti Madonna. Very and so I felt very much like I was doing a lot of defending of her mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on yeah, the regular. Um, and, I think, and, and I, you know what? I I think you had, some, or I don't know if it was you who mentioned it in your essay or somebody else. A, a couple of people might have mentioned it in their essays. I think that was definitely something that, as a Madonna fan, everyone can relate to: is that you are always defending her and your fandom in some way, shape or form, because you yes. sort of, you sort of personalize the, the attacks, you know, like somebody's attacking her. Oh, that's, she's a slut. How dare she do that? Or she's, she's a heathen. Why would she do that in that video with like a prayer? And you're sort of like, you're angry. You, you're, why are these people attacking her? Because you feel attacked as well, because you, For you sure. love what she's doing. And so I think that, or that almost, bond you even more to her because you feel so personally attacked. <laughs> yeah. And like, she always says that she's so misunderstood. Right. And she's always saying that. And I always felt like I understood her. Mm-hmm. And so when, and, and so it was always that thing of like, people just don't get it, but maybe I can like let, uh, let them see that yeah. they're misinformed mm-hmm. and they're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, I very much, I was very, you know, I was very, young and, you know, not as savvy to the ways of the world or whatever. And I, in the beginning, uh, very much felt like this was really just about me and Madonna. And if there's anyone (laughs) else out there who has thoughts or feelings about Madonna, I mean, they're fans, you know, (laughs) schmoo schmoo fans, whatever, but she and I have the dance thing. We have the, so if you're attacking her, you're attacking me, Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, but yeah, I remember like just negative, you know, scuttle. But I think I I did mention somewhere uh, in my essay um, about the um, well, or even in my in my uh, 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 journal piece, just different times where people either said something about the sex book or something else, you know, where I I felt like I had to a be the first to watch it, like the uh, the when she dropped the erotica video and there was like a big disclaimer and it was like mm-hmm. you can't, you know. We're showing uh, it once and only once. And, and here it is. Fantasies, and if you can't handle it, turn off now. And I'm like, good Lord, you know, who can't handle <laughs> this, you know? And I hadn't even like fully explored mine. And I was still like, let's do it, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like, uh, Tony, like maybe you uh, had a more active social life during that time period. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't well, have to think where I was listening to her jams or anything. Cool. Well, I mean, I just remember... You know, we always had the radio on in the car or like at the neighborhood pool and it was always, always Madonna. And they, you know, it was like 93Q and Power 104 and they always oh played Oh God, 93Q. Oh yeah. The <laughs> OG, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and yeah, like I remember one year they, they, I guess the radio station sponsored uh, book covers and one of them had Madonna on it with like the thing from Vogue, like her doing the face. And I was like, I can't wrap this around my school books yet. I really need to, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like that, you know, you're always kind of like, you know, jamming your car, you know, with all the windows down. But then if, you know, if I just Madonna, remember something didn't else. Really do that. I went to that, um, who's that girl world tour. And, pr- you know, prior to the tour, they were doing advertisements in the newspaper mm-hmm. and they were running that one image with the who's that girl, like just a million times. Yeah. And I, you know, this is pre internet. So like sure. I was showing my fandom by collecting every picture of her from like this tiny to huge and plastering my walls and took great pride. in. I must have more Madonna pictures than anybody. And I had like friends and family across the country, mailing me <laughs> clips of that newspaper. Oh, ad. Nice. <laughs> that girl. Oh my God. Where I, I had one where it went like small, medium, like her head's got small all the way to big. <laughs> <all the ones. laughs> Oh my God. And I thought I was dedicated cutting through all the Houston newspapers to like, you know, any mention of where she stayed and when she, yes. you know, like they even had like a thing, Madonna was in the Galleria today. And I'm like, no, I was there too. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, cause she was there for like three weeks, um, do, uh, opening Blonde Ambition after they were in Japan. And I, I mean, we were on, on the, on the hunt every single day. It was, it was like, like a, some kind of a frenzy I'd never seen before in Houston, but then again, I mean, I didn't really hang out during the rodeo, so it could be like that, you know? 
uh-huh. for other <laughs> artists. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Heather, so we've discussed many times on the podcast about the gay male experience as a Madonna fan, and um, but we're also really interested in learning more about the gay female gays regarding Madonna. I mean, when I was growing up in the 90s, I had a lesbian friend group, and I loved hearing from all my friends about what Madonna songs they liked or what Madonna looks they liked or or just what they thought of her. And it was always so different from, you know, the gay guys that were always like, oh, I love her because she's slutty. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean that, that's one fan's opinion, you know. But um, so also around the same time in the early 90s, you know, the media liked to throw around this phrase called lesbian chic. You know, it was almost as hateful as the Brat Pack or any of those things that, you know, the media make up. But Madonna definitely took advantage of the gay baiting and playing with gender roles. Um what was it like to see these images co-opted by Madonna, especially because at the time she was like, you know, the most visible female artist and, you know, she really had no fear. Did you feel like that was genuine, you know, her exploration or was she just playing dress up? Well, I mean, a couple things. Cause I mean, first, first of all, again, like I was so young at that time uh-huh. that like, I, I learned about all of this after the fact. Right. So mm-hmm. there's some stuff where like when I became a Madonna fan, like the real moment that I like the, the era that I became super dedicated was the music album. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, and I remember Ray of Light had grabbed my attention quite a bit. And in particular, I remembered um, watching her for, uh, get an MTV music award at, and right after performing, she's like in the wife beater after she performed and she was accepting the award and people were screaming for her in the corner and she's just like quiet over there. <laughs> and then like, goes back to her speech. And I was like, man, this woman is a boss bitch. Mm-hmm. And so like that drew me to her. So when I became a Madonna fan, it was less of the bratty sort of, um, sex forward energy that, mm-hmm. uh, coined at the beginning. And then later, you know, she was just already sort of like a queen. And so for me, I would look back at that stuff and I just thought she was having fun. You know, Mm -hmm. I I thought she was being Madonna at her best. You know, she's, she's a brilliant provocateur. And, and if something, um, if society is uncomfortable with something, she's always one to put it in their faces, Mm -hmm. um, and demand that they look at it. And, and I always love and appreciate her for that. But as like a, as a gay woman now, like I, I think Madonna for me, I always just knew that homosexuality was okay in her eyes. You know, I personally always relate more to gay men. I don't even have a lot of lesbian friends. I feel like such a terrible lesbian. My wife and I are always (laughs) saying that we're like, we're just like, (laughs) I like, you know, I mean, I, I think because I'm a Madonna fan, like, I just always identify with, with, with gay men. And so I wish I had more of an, of, of a thoughtful answer about, you know, the lesbian perception of Madonna, particularly when she was using it, um, you know, to scandalize, you know, the media a bit, but yeah, I just think she's just Madonna and and she's going to do what she wants to do. And if if there is something that is uh, uncomfortable for people to talk about, she is going to make sure they talk about it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, you know, and you know, what's interesting is that you, during that time that you discovered her during music, Ray of Light era, you know, us fans that grew up with her, we kind of thought she was done with all this, you know, subversive sexual you know madonna and then all of a sudden she gets married and kisses britney spears on stage yeah and for me at at that time i was such a i had become such a big fan that i had i thought people who liked britney spears and christina aguilera at that time were like they didn't understand true (laughs) artistry yeah true (laughs) artistry like madonna paved the way for those bitches like they wouldn't even be here and and now i love britney of course who doesn't But at that time, I was so, once again, defensive and protective over Madonna's legacy, Mm -hmm. which I think Madonna is such a genius in the sense that the second that there is anyone, one thing that has allowed her, I think, to stay at the top the way that, or at least somewhat so, that she's been able to maintain um, the career that she's had for so long is that she's very quick to recognize who is up and coming and she mm-hmm. will collaborate with them immediately, you yeah. know? In some way, shape, um, or form. In some way, shape, or form. And and the truth is, is that any sort of um, art form requires, you know, an artist to evolve. And we all know Madonna's genius at evolving, but she also, I don't think, would be able to do that if she wasn't open to learning from the next, the, the subsequent generations, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. 
No, I, I I can totally relate to that. I mean, when the Spice Girls came up, I was like, Madonna would never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Leanne, what about you? What do you what do you feel about Madonna adopting her her lesbian tendencies from you know I um I mean I'm straight and during that time I never I mean obviously we didn't have conversations around it as you know openly and good as we do now um sure. but back then I never felt the need to be like well what does this mean so is she with girls or is she, it never even it mm-hmm. was really just like exploring sexuality which I was you know down for myself so mm. I. I didn't really put it into that context at that time, kind of the only thing with regard to homosexuality that I would have uh, paid attention to was her conversation in the public about AIDS. And Mm I remember uh, Tony can probably speak to this as well, how like fear mongering, scary, terrifying that whole, you know, I mean, I, I was telling Heather one time, I, I got off my birth control pill and I dropped a lot of weight and I was convinced that I was dying. I had AIDS. I didn't want to go to the doctor and find out, you know, like it was really scary. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's so great. I mean, and amazing really for the time period and everything that she really spoke to that so strongly and, you know, influenced, I'm sure, lots of minds. I mean, I personally don't think I would be a monster who would see that disease as, you know, anyone deserving it. But I'm also glad that she was such a, you know, outspoken person about the importance of dealing with it and that it's not a gay issue. It's a human issue. And, you know, mm-hmm. so I guess yeah, I mean, that. during that time, opening up my, uh, like a prayer cassette and seeing the insert with the AIDS information. I mean, even though I was like, you know, a nerdy teenage virgin, I felt really seen and almost, you know, kind of like guided, you know, I was like, wow. I mean, I listen to her music, but, um, she's telling me take care of myself, you know, yeah, yeah. for some reason. Cause, uh, Pat Benatar wasn't doing that. <laughs> well, and so with the book, I mean, there are some really wonderful, wonderful stories that you like, I was reading one after another, after another, and I'm just like, oh, these are so wonderful to hear. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I, I feel like, I didn't go into it thinking I was going to be reading some stories collected in your book and being so moved by them. You know, there's some really touching and relatable stories. You know, we saw ourselves, I'm sure a lot of your readers and our listeners will be able to sort of identify with the stories as well. Um, And like I said, at the top of the show, it proves that, you know, Madonna fans share a common thread. It's, you know, we, we are all sort of connected in a similar way in a fashion. So, um, and your, both of your recollections are certainly the heart of the book. Uh, you know, Leanne takes us to Houston, Heather transports us to Madonna's high school, um, (laughs) you know, and the, the other stories are super touching and triumphant and relatable, which stories really jumped off the page for you, um, either separately or together? Did were, were there stories that you were getting and you were like, "Oh my God, yes, we have to put this in the we have to put this in the book." I mean, personally, I love all the stories for their mm-hmm. you know each has sort of a different thing, but I I think we chose together. We we equally liked um, Tommy Natoli's story. He's the one that we opened the book with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Truth we and Dare Thanksgiving. A, yeah, <laughs> we thought it was we thought it was um a great way to lead the book because he talked about um how his relationship with Madonna was special and that it transcended, you know, what a usual fan, you know, experience generally is. And immediately Leanne and I both were like, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> and, we were like, and we were like, you know, I think that's a great essay to kick off um a, a book about, about Madonna, because so, you know, the, the other stories sort of echo those sentiments with, with their own, you know, specific individual details. So that, that's, that's one thing uh, that I think we both thought was so neat about the whole thing is that, you know, we put out a call for these essays. We didn't, you know, really push anyone in any which way direction, just sort of, as you said at the beginning, sort of your journey, with Madonna, you know, obviously from a a fan perspective. And then when we get them and they so easily are cohesive, it makes it so like in black and white and not just conceptually obvious to you 
the common thread between, you know, all of her fans, how she really. Yeah, really was like touching gen- genuinely to yeah. be like, wow, you know, like Madonna has really, uh, really spoke to these, to all of us. And at different times, a, eight, at different times. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, we, I think when Tony and I had started the podcast uh, now almost four years ago, and we we had just started doing it as conversations about Madonna, what we loved and admired about her. And then we started interviewing fans. And then now it's transpired to people who have worked with her or, you know, actors, singers, dancers who have been influenced by her in some way, shape or form. And it is very wow. similar to what goes on in the stories in your book where it's like they came, she was this beacon of light, this ray of light (laughs) in their life. And she struck a chord with them and uh, she transformed their, or empowered them in some way. So it's, it's, it's all very similar. And it's, it's fun to think that she's had that sort of like unbeknownst to her, she's affecting all these people in their lives in some way. Yeah. You know, I think, though, that it's very benign. <laughs> and, and, and that's what I love even more about her is that she absolutely knows how powerful she is. And she's and and only someone who truly knows it, I think, has the ability to empower in that sort of way, you know, like. Um, but yes, exactly. I, I, I loved exactly what you said. But yeah, she, she knows. She, she knows. <laughs> <that she's... laughs> it's kind of like what I was saying about getting the, you know, the the um, submissions <clears throat> is that um, conceptually, yes, I'm not an idiot. I know she's impacted millions. You know what I mean? She has huge fans. But then really reading the personal stories, it was like, no, 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 like impacted them like she did you. Like more yeah. than just, oh, you're awesome. We love your music. You're cool. She helped people's development, you know? Right. It's just pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I think right now we're living in a post-Madonna, you know, influenced world. And I feel like her influence is so clear to me, you know? Um, and I'm sure, I remember when I was in college, I was taking a gender and media studies class and there was a book the first book we were assigned, like chapter one was called like the Madonna phenomenon. Mm. And it was all about, you know, Madonna's impact um, as a woman in in the media and how um, she came right at this particular time in history. And yeah, you know, um, we really are, it's, it's, it's great to see that. And then just with the book, it was really interesting um yeah to just see that like it made me want to be friends with every person Mm -hmm. that wrote in you know like we're friends with them and we didn't even have like a whole bunch of communication you know like Stefan said you know we've had all kinds of artists on the show and I love to ask them how Madonna has inspired and resonated with them personally and also how it inspires their work ethic life ethic uh your comedy your performance so tell us each of you how how that kind of transfigures in your life? Well, I mean, obviously her work ethic was something, you know, uh, to be admired. And I remember like back in the day reading about her um, exercise routine and like how many laps in the pool and all of this. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, she's, she's putting in the work, but Mm -hmm. I think the way it affected me the most, because I really wanted to be a dancer early on. And that is something that kind of has a little bit of a limited window. Um, and oftentimes requires like a little bit of money in the family to get you in the right stuff or whatever. So when she transformed each time, it it did not feel to me like shtick. It felt like her exploring different sides of herself. You know, a lot of people would say like, oh, this is totally, she did this on purpose. You know, not to say that she didn't have mm-hmm. some strategy in mind, but I did feel like it was organic. And it let me feel like, like when the dancing wasn't going to be my life, you know, it allowed me to then explore other things and not feel like, well, you picked dancing and then you didn't do that. (laughs) You know, you fail and you're done. I like went on to acting. I'm now in stand up. I, you know, it allowed me, I did the little goth phase thing for a minute where (laughs) I dyed my hair to black and looked like a lunatic. Um, But it allowed me to, to try all those different sides of me and not feel like somehow that was, you know, weird or, or unacceptable, mm-hmm. if that makes mm-hmm. sense. And, and it's yeah. changing, you know, it's stand up podcast, 
Madonna triple book. threat, triple threat. And for me, I mean, that was one of the most, the things that I've always admired most about her that I've always looked toward the most. Um, I share in the book, you know, an experience that, you know, I was in third grade watching the Ray of Light video. And I just remember, you know, there was all this talk about her post baby bod, you know, like, look at how great she looks after having a baby. And she was 40. Look at how great Madonna looks for 40. You know, her age was always in the news, just like it is now. There's not an article about Madonna that doesn't also Mm -hmm. include her age um, and what she should be doing at that age. Mm -hmm. I just like my mom was the same age as Madonna or is the same age as Madonna. And and I just was like, my mom doesn't look like that. And so um, I like really just was like really impressed. And when I started becoming a, a, like a diehard fan, I, her work ethic was the, you know, the premier thing that always spoke to me, especially because, you know, she'd her legendary story moving to New York with $35 Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, sleeping in synagogues and just the, you know, even like people from back then that she was working with will always would always say like they would be doing drugs madonna would be up at you know 5 a.m to run six miles or whatever and to me it was like look what she was able to do it was because madonna is super talented super talented me and leanne were saying like it's so frustrating sometimes when people don't think she's talented like she's absolutely talented but she took impressive talent but with her extraordinary work ethic led to extraordinary results Mm -hmm. and so it's been uh she's been such an inspiration for me in that way. I fucking moved to Los Angeles with barely any money, Mm -hmm. knowing no one, you know, to try to uh, make things happen in in entertainment right in, right in her footsteps. And so, you know, every day I feel guilty if I don't fit in a workout or, (laughs) or work myself to death. I'm also a triple Capricorn, which is like Ah. a whole nother thing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so you mentioned, you mentioned being part of like, the, the entertainment world. So both of you are performers, actors, comedians, two things. What do you think of Madonna's acting career? And what did you think of her brief stint as a stand-up comedian? I'll speak to the acting. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I don't remember a lot about the, the stand-up blip. I think when that happened, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where I was in my stand-up journey, but I think I may have been more still rooted in this idea that like, you're not real unless you're doing shows that make you want to kill yourself later. You know what I mean? So so I think I felt like you're skipping a few steps there. Um, (laughs) But as far as acting, you know, I really think that she has always had the skills to do that. Well, I don't think she always had the projects necessarily to show that to the world, but I, I do remember being so blown away by Evita. And I can't tell you how many times I watched that on replay and my friend had the CD and I would, you know, gallivant around the living room. Like I was, yes. yes. <laughs> who, who, hasn't, who hasn't reenacted the Casa Rosada moment? I mean, <laughs> he was incredible in that, you know? So I don't think she gets enough credit as per use. I, I don't know why, mm-hmm. But that's been since. That's why there's a great tweet in the book about the credit and Madonna not getting it. That's right. Do you have thoughts about the stand up, Heather? Because I, I feel like. Well, yeah. Well, and I mean, on both of those things. Well, first of all, as an actor, um, I, I don't. I think the issue has always been. I, I'm really particular. I'm married to an actor, and so like I, I really understand how important uh, somebody's energy is to a role. Like. Mm-hmm. It, you're either an energy or you're not. And Madonna is such a, a really powerful energy, such a big energy. And I think she was amazing in Evita. And she fucking, once again, her work ethic, her voice. I mean, her voice had never been better. What she put herself through to do that film um, was incredible. And again, yes, we did not, she did not get enough credit for it. I'm just thinking of, you know, what's the, the writer's name and on, in her behind the music and rice. Oh. Like, yeah. She's like, Madonna was Ava, Ava Perone. Like she really, mm-hmm. she was, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I think, and in desperately seeking Susan, another good performance, she, that is who Madonna was at that time. Yeah. Yep. And so I just think that she hasn't been given things that reflect um, who, you know, she is at, at, at a time period other than those two occurrences. I think they, I think in the beginning, they really thought she was just going to go away like a two hip, three hip. Oh yeah. Or something. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah. She would have gotten more opportunities. We would have seen, 
you know, her skill set sooner. Yeah. And I mean, I, I just think also, you know, it's like she tr- was trying to work with Sean and Shanghai Surprise was such a disaster. You know, it was just like a poor project choosing, you know. Yeah. I always um, thought that Madonna's flaws with her her projects was that she was picking roles that the character she was playing was not bigger than she was. So exactly. it was, She's it was, big, yes. it was really difficult for an audience to walk in and believe that she was a missionary, you know, same thing. <laughs> yes. Like nobody was going to walk in and believe that Sean Penn and Madonna were not playing anyone other than Sean Penn and Madonna. Exactly. You know, like if you look at some of the roles where she's been successful, she's the character was a little bit more of a heightened role. So it's like Desperately Seeking Susan, A League of Their Own, Avita, like some of those, who's that girl? Like Mm -hmm. those characters were so over the top in good ways and bad ways, but that's where she was able to sort of disappear a little bit. Otherwise, you know, in the next best thing, she's playing a suburban mom with a gay best friend. It's like, you just don't buy it. Like, I'm sorry. It's Madonna and Rupert Everett, you know, like, <laughs> just, sure. just play yourself. Yeah, exactly. And, and then that's the thing. It's like a league of their own allowed her to tap. You know, there was this, her cheeky side got to come out. Mm-hmm. Avita, her, you know, um, powerful side got to come out. And yeah. Um, but normally, yes, I and I agree with you. I think her her persona eclipses yeah. that of, of the role. But as far as the stand-up goes, I actually was a fan of her set. I, I was a huge <laughs> fan of it because I actually think that it was genius because she specific, you know, it was ironic. Mm-hmm. I, I think the thing that Madonna loves more than anything is irony. And, you know, to go there and talk and stand-up comedy requires you to be relatable. You 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 have to be. And so her set is essentially an entire thing about things that no one on earth could relate to. Mm-hmm. You know, she's talking about the, the an original piece of art that she, the original Picasso in her, in her house and, and dating her, her teenage son's friends. And like, they're just, to me, it was, it was so funny for, for that uh, reason. And, and yeah, I, I, I've always loved Madonna's sense of humor. I think that's another thing that goes unnoticed. I think the sex book is, is so tongue in cheek mm-hmm. and funny. Oh yeah. And she's really, people just don't get her sense of humor. I think she's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I totally agree. Her sense of humor is so, I, you know, she loves irony and she just loves to like stick her tongue out at people. And, and if, exactly, and, it, yeah. and if you miss it, she loves it even more, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So exactly. What do you, to think about her career currently and what, or what better yet, what do you hope for Madonna's career coming up? I feel like right now we're in this place where it could be almost like a blank slate for her. She could pretty much do anything she wants because she's already done everything else, you know? And, but I mean, what, what are your thoughts about where she's going? Like, for example, with the biopic. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I feel like a lot of people, Madonna's really determined to make her mark in film. Mm-hmm. She wasn't able to do it as an actor, and so she is has turned her eye to directing. And I think, like anything Madonna does, I think she's going to do her due diligence. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I did see Filth and Wisdom, and then W. E. And mm. both of those films felt like her. Yeah, you know, as you know, a Madonna fan would know. And so when her the announcement that she was directing her own biopic came out and I was like that's hysterical and who else would do that why not (laughs) (laughs) but why not but I I I honestly feel like it's necessary because I don't think anyone could properly capture her energy other than her so I think I'm really I'm genuinely excited for it and I think that's where her focus is and I think that if Guy Ritchie got 90 million of her dollars Mm -hmm. she is determined determined to best him as a director yeah. <laughs> and I don't and and I hope that it occurs that's what I look forward to I look forward to seeing where this takes her yeah let's put that out into the universe because yeah I, I think she's a very capable director and I, I I'd like to see her explore different themes you know especially herself thing I think she's so capable in so many ways that I'm never thinking God, I hope she comes up with something to stay out there. Or I hope she, you know what I mean? I'm not worried about it. I'm like, you know, I don't watch enough news and stuff. So I'll just be like, Heather, you know, let me know when something. (laughs) And I'll be there. But that's, that's also something that's so amazing for an artist is to be at a point where like, I'm expecting there'll be more amazingness. There's no... Mm -hmm. There's no questioning. There's no doubt. There's no concern. Will this want, you know, 
She's just a bad. Yeah, we know, we do know the two things she probably will never do, which is a Christmas album and a Vegas residency, yeah. which I. <laughs> Thank God. I love that she's going to stick to that. Stay, like, baby. You yes. will never see her do those. And I love that about her. You know, it's like, she's just not going to sell out like the rest of, not that mm. the other artists aren't doing something that's not good for them because good for them. But I just love that she's like, always infamously hated those things. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, cause to her, she's like, well, I think she's like, cause that's kind of the same idea as like putting oneself out to pasture. Like, okay, this is my one act. Mm -hmm. I'm a one note performer. I've got my Vegas residency. Yeah. And you know, and maybe I'll throw out like a gimmicky Christmas album and, yeah. or whatever, it's you a know, cash grab. that's, she's just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Madonna's <laughs> like, I'm an artist and I, exactly. I want to, express myself in a way that feels yes. honest and yeah. true. And, and Picasso, yeah. not Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it was, it was an artist. So it's, it may not always commercially win, but that's not what she's striving for, or we would have a shit ton of Christmas albums, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no, you're yeah. absolutely right. I mean, we were not at her last concert in Vegas, but uh, Liberty, one of our listeners and friend of the podcast was there. And it was a complete debacle because she was trying to put out, serious Madame X art and people were walking in and out and people were, you know, they, they're like screaming for the hits and it's just like, I don't think she'll ever go back there. And that drive, and that drives me this insane more than anything is when people get angry that she's not playing the hits. I'm like, you're angry because you stopped evolving as a listener, like period, you know, like she's putting out new music. And if you listen to it, like every, like whenever people are like, what's your favorite Madonna album? I'm like the latest one because I, you know, I, I go on my own journey with, yeah. with her. And I feel like every latest album becomes the album that I listen to on repeat for the next two to four years, whenever the next one comes yeah. out. I call it the new narrative. I'm like, okay, Mad Max, the new narrative. I get so sick of my jokes so easily that I cannot imagine <laughs> if someone, you know, if someone's like, sing Holiday, if I'm her, I'd be like, oh my God. You know, or something. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> I've, been, like, at shows, over it, I've been at shows where people walk out when they start to realize that it's like an album tour, you know? Wow. And it's, Yeah, I, I never understand that either. I'm always just like, when, why are you here? You spent how much money on these concert tickets? Mm -hmm. And you, yeah. ex you expect to hear her sing Material Girl? What? <laughs> yeah and like it's it is funny because it says it never once did it say this is a Christmas it's, it's tour, tour. Yeah. you know it's, yeah. like, <laughs> it's called the madame x tour have you listened to the album you're not getting material girl <laughs> and if you do <laughs> and if you do it's not gonna sound it's like the album sound version the same, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay one last question so what do you two hope madonna's response will be when she reads the book because you know she will you know she will I love that you're so optimistic that she will. I, I mean, I don't know. I would be thrilled that she, if she were to read it. I, why, why are you so confident that she will? Do you think that she uh, is like into her fan stuff like that? I guess yes. uh, Stephanie. She reads her. You, she yeah. reads her Insta, She reads her Instagram comments, and uh, yeah, I, yeah. Th I think she's more in touch with what's happening even if she doesn't acknowledge it publicly. Mm -hmm. Right. She's not letting on, but oh God. Because I mean, think about it. You're this huge, iconic, legendary artist in the world. Yeah. You know, her team's going to be like, Oh, uh, Madonna, you were in this magazine and that magazine. <laughs> and here's a new book about your fans. <laughs> and, and Madonna Tori Lane's just put, put out together a, song. a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, absolutely. She'll read it. But then tell us about some of the feedback you've received from fans and readers. Cause that's what's important. I mean, all I've heard is that, you know, like that people just like you guys just, you know, that they were really touched. A lot of people reached out to me to be like, this really inspired me to get to know Madonna more. Oh, nice. Me. nice. A couple people told me that and was like, um, and I feel like I got to know you more and, and just like some shared acquaintances of Leanne and I said similar things. But ultimately, yeah, I mean, it's just um, Leanne and I did this um, genuinely out of uh, our genuine appreciation, right? And since we are both in entertainment, we both talked about it beforehand of like other things we do, we sort of have attachment to outcome. And with this, it's just a love letter. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of effort and energy and was difficult to track down people 
to track down fans and people were so suspicious of us. Like we'd reach out to fans over Instagram and, you know, they, they were just, it, which was so surprising because it was like, no, we're, we're fans like you. And we like, I would have jumped on it. If somebody was like, Hey, you're a Madonna fan. Would you be interested in, I would want to write an essay. Yeah. Yes, yes. And they were mm-hmm. like, Oh yeah. What, what, what is this all about? Kind of a thing. And I'm like, Hey dude, we're not asking you to send yeah. them to Jamaica or something, you know? <laughs> Yeah, this is legit. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just it's been nice to to have other fans and just people uh, enjoy it. And 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 the best part has been reading the other stories from other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I can't wait for the sequel, the limited series and <laughs> a feature film adaptation <laughs> and animated short. <laughs> well, um, we should definitely be involved in directing so that I can choose who plays little Leanne. <laughs> Of course, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think it's time, Stefan, for my favorite part of the podcast. It would be that time. Okay, so Heather and Leanne, uh, a part of the show every guest gets is a little thing we like to call the lightning round. So this is just questions that we're going to ask you off the top of your head. It doesn't have to be forever, but it's where you're at in your Madonna journey <laughs> today. Since there's two of you, it's I'm going to ask the question. Heather, you go first. Leanne, you go second with your answer. Just remember... Quick, off the top of your head. I thought you were going to tell us to buzz in. No, no, no. no. <laughs> one uh, hand behind our back. <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> Favorite Madonna song? Oh, that's hard. Um, How do you fuck me? Um, off the top of your head. You know, off the top of my head. I mean, off the top of my head, I'm going to say I, I, uh, iconic. I'm going to oh, go with one. Lucky Star. I'm just going nice. based my history. Favorite Madonna music video? Human Nature. Mm, good. Yeah, I love human nature. Yeah, the dancing is, is really dope in human nature. Favorite Madonna tour? The Virgin Tour, because it was my first and, like, so moving for me. I, I wish I was around for Blonde Ambition. I didn't get to go to Blonde Ambition. Um, but I would say um, Rebel Heart, because I was front row, and that was the closest. Ooh. And I had a, you know, we yeah. looked in each other's eyes. So another had really moment. close seats. I didn't really have close seats, but I was still breathing the next same. Next tour, age. next tour. Don't splurge, <laughs> splurge. <laughs> a favorite Madonna movie? I'll go with Evita. Um, you know, I, I, I I'm, and I'm going to say League of Their Own. <laughs> oh, nice. And favorite Madonna look, and this can be from a photo shoot, a tour, a music video, in concert, wherever. I loved that look she had. Uh, it was it maybe it was New Year's. It was some kind of MTV thing where they're up high above the crowd outside in New York. And yeah, that was the VMAs with the Courtney Love, yeah, and she was wearing the, the Gucci. Yeah. yeah, yes, that whole like period of her was like I tried to replicate it. I've shown Heather a picture of a shirt <laughs> I bought that was very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, last Halloween, Leah McSweeney, one of the Real Housewives of New York, dressed up as that look for Halloween. And oh, really? She, she looked, yeah, look it up. It's, it's, uh, it's did pretty Did she pull uncanny. it off? Yeah, I think she did. Yeah. did don't was, you think so? It, it was pretty good, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, that's a tough look to pull off. I mean, yeah. you gotta, I mean, it's all gotta look the same, you know. Heather, what about you? What's your favorite Madonna look? Um, I'd say the, um, I'm going to it's split because part of it is like the secret era. I loved the nose ring mm-hmm. and the, and the bl- bleach blonde, but then also the confessions era. Mm. Um, I think Madonna peaked body wise, late forties, 48, mm-hmm. man, that tour was, she was like in rock and shape. I just loved that. And the seventies vibe then. Yeah. I cool. love a fair, a fair, a feather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thanks guys for coming on our show. Um, Heather, Leanne, we appreciate it so much that you guys joined us and told us about your book. Tell everyone where they can find you on social media. And, wh- and so, where they can buy the book. Oh, yeah, and where uh, they can buy the book, obviously. Yeah, the book's, the book's um, available on Amazon and Kindle. And we also have these fun T-shirts, Madonna fans yeah. do it better. Um, I want one. That we, yeah, right? I mean, I think it goes, I mean, I think we do. Yeah. Yeah. I think Madonna fans do. do do yes. it better. Um, and uh and so aware we've of got that. those, <laughs> <laughs> and we uh, those are available. We've got a little Etsy account we set up with with the, these and a couple other fun Madonna saying shirts um, and apparel. Madonna fan shop on Etsy. Uh, that That's makes me called. so excited. Yeah, we'll definitely post that so everyone, yep. including me, can order. Their merch. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> and yeah, and then I'm on all my social media is my full name Heather Terman. Same Leanne Tooker, two E's, two N's, two O's. 
<laughs> oh, and you guys listen listen to Leanne's um, The Room on um, Apple Music or Spotify. It's really funny. Okay. It's very Oh, funny. did you listen? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm telling all my friends. <laughs> and in addition to following our wonderful guests on social media, remember you can also find our podcast on Instagram and Twitter at MLVC Podcast. You can also donate to the podcast at Venmo at MLVC Podcast, as well as think about becoming a subscriber on Patreon, patreon.podbean.com forward slash MLVC Podcast. Go out and buy the book. It's called Madonna Fans Do It Better, a anthology leanne heather thank you so much for coming on the show today this was thank a you for pleasure. having us <laughs> thanks guys until next time uh, see ya. yes see you guys <laughs> <laughs>